This is video example 10.8. And this problem deals with two independent populations. We're interested in the means for those two populations and we want to compare those means. So it's from section one of chapter 10 and here's our problem. It's found on page 331, it's problem 810. It says, a recent study found that 51 children who watched commercials, a commercial for Walker Crisps, Walker Crisps potato chips, hard to say, featuring a long-standing sports celebrity endorser, ate a mean of 36 grams of Walker chip crisps, as compared to a mean of 25 grams of Walker crisps for 41 children who watched a commercial for an alternative food snack. Suppose the sample standard deviation, again, that's a key word, sample standard deviation. So it came from a sample that tells me I've got to use T instead of Z. The sample standard deviation was 12.8, okay? I had 41, so those are, that's my information that I'm given there. And we'll look at that on just the next page. And then I've got a few questions about that that I want to find out. It says, assuming the population variances are equal, and sigma is 0.05, is there evidence that the mean amount of Walker crisps eaten was significantly higher, that's a key phrase right there, higher, that tells me it's a one-tail test, because I want to know if the group that watched the sports celebrity endorsed commercials did eat more potato chips than the other group. Assume the variances are equal again. Construct a 95% confidence interval estimate for the difference between the mean amount of crisp eaten by those who watched the celebrity endorsed commercial and those who watched an alternative commercial. And then compare the results. Okay, so there's a lot of information there. We'll keep coming back to that slide to make sure that we don't lose any of that. First thing I want to do is just write down what I'm given. X bar 1 is 36, X bar 2 is 25, S1 is 21.4, S2 is 12.8, N1 is 51, N2 is 41. So that's all the information that's provided in the problem. You can tell from that we have two populations and two samples. Since S is given the sample values, that tells me I need to use T instead of Z. So why am I using the formula? I'm assuming independent random samples. That means the values from one sample are not related to the values in the other sample. They're separate populations. The samples are assumed to be normally distributed since both N1 and N2 are greater than 30. And the problem told me to assume the variances are equal. So that's what I'm going to do. That tells me that a pooled variance t-test is what I want to use where I can combine the variances. So what I want to do now, let's go back to the question, is there evidence the mean amount of crisps eaten was higher for those who watched the sports celebrity endorsed commercial? So that tells me the alternative hypothesis must say that the mean for the celebrity endorsed commercial, which is group one, is greater than the mean for the non-celebrity endorsed commercial, which is group two. So here's the way I write my six steps. What is the null and alternative? The null is mu1 is less than or equal to mu2, and the alternative is mu1 is greater than mu2. So notice we have a greater than sign in the alternative, which points me to the right and tells me I only care about high values. I only care if mu1 is greater than mu2. Otherwise, maybe they're equal or maybe mu1 is even less than mu2 that tells me i cannot reject the null step two choose the level of significance alpha and the sample size so alpha is 0.05 let's go back and see if that's the case okay it said did it say anything about alpha yes it did in part a it said alpha equals 0.05 if it didn't tell me that that's what i would have done anyway all right so 0.05, and my sample sizes are N1 equals 51 and N2 equals 41. Now notice I didn't say the combined sample size is 92. That would be incorrect because I have two samples and they're from two different populations. So therefore, 
we have to list them separately. N1 is 51, N2 is 41. That's step two. Step three, what test statistic do I need to use? Because sigma is unknown and the population variances are, I'm told that they are equal, I've got to use the pooled variance t-test. Step four, what's the critical value? The critical value, remember, always comes from a table. What table? It's going to be the t-table because it's a t-problem. So my formula for degrees of freedom is n1 plus n2 minus 2. So that's 51 plus 41 minus 2 equals 90. And alpha equals 0.05. So therefore, my critical value from the table, which I'll show you in just a minute, is 1.662. That is my critical value of t that comes from the table based on 90 degrees of freedom and an upper tail area of 0.05. Notice I didn't divide that by 2 because it is a upper tail test, one tail upper test. So I want to put all my type 1 error probability on the same side of the distribution. Here's my table. Upper tail area, 0.05, 90 degrees of freedom, gives me 1.6620. So that is where the critical value from step four came from, 1.662. Okay? And we go to our Excel test results. And this comes from PHDAT2. So notice this is problem 10.8, and it assumes equal population variances. Why is that? Because the problem told me to assume that those variances were equal. Okay? So when I fill in my Excel here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say alpha is 0.05. That's my level of significance. My hypothesized difference for a difference of mean test is always going to be zero. So zero is the hypothesized difference while I'm doing the test, and the level of significance is 0.05. Then I just fill in the numbers for the first sample and the second sample. Sample size, mean, standard deviation. Sample size, mean, standard deviation. This is just the information that you were given in the problem. Back here, wherever it is, there it is. That's where these numbers come from. All right, so I just fill them into my formula there, into my Excel uh, pH stat, and it will calculate the result for me. So I've got population 1, sample degrees of freedom 50, and degrees of freedom 40, because remember it's N1 minus 1, N2 minus 1, gives me total degrees of freedom, which is equal to 90. Okay? And so for step 5, what I want to look at on this printout is going to be the, oh, notice here, here's my step 4 value, 1.6620. So that's the value that I used. I can get it from a table, or I can get it from the printout. Either way, it should be the same number. It's an upper tail value because I don't divide by 2. Step 5, here's the number I'm looking for, 2.8990. So that's my t-test statistic, which goes in step 5. All right, so, and notice I have a p-value. We'll talk about that in a minute. So here's my value. This is the formula that we're using. T stat equals X bar 1 minus X bar 2 minus mu 1 minus mu 2 over, now remember, mu 1 minus mu 2 is assumed to be equal to 0. So I can drop that part of the formula out. My denominator says the square root of S squared P, which is my pooled variance, times 1 over N1 plus 1 over N2. And so again, looking at my result from Excel, back here, whoops, sorry, right here, 2.8990, that's the number. So I write it down, that's all I need to do for step five. I don't have to worry about calculating all this because Excel has done that for me. Okay, reject the null. Now I'm ready for step six. I've got to make a decision. I'm going to reject the null. Why am I going to do that? Because my t-stat is 2.899. Notice, and my critical value was 1.661. So because the T statistic is greater than the upper critical value, that's why I'm rejecting the null. Okay, so I reject the null. I'm 95% confident that I'm accurate in stating that the mean amount of Walker chips 
crisps, chips, eaten for children who watched the endorsed commercial was higher than for those who watched the alternative. So that means the alternative is the true statement. Mu1 is greater than Mu2, and I'm 95% sure that that is in fact the case. So I'm willing to change policy based on what I figured out here and to decide that it works better when I have celebrity endorsements. It causes children to eat more of our chips. Okay, so going back to the question again now. That's part one. Is there evidence the mean amount of Walker crisps eaten was significantly higher for those who watched the sports celebrity endorsed commercial? The answer is yes. 95% confident that that is in fact true. Now in part B it says, still assuming the variances are equal, although we don't know exactly what the population variances are, construct a 95% confidence interval estimate of the difference between the mean amount of those chips eaten by children who watched the endorsed commercial and those who watched an alternative commercial. Okay, so now instead of saying, is one greater than the other, the question I'm really asking is, how much greater is group one mean than group two? Then compare and discuss the results of A and B. Let's look at the p-value. The p-value, according to my Excel printout, is 0 0.0024. So it's less than 0.01, it's less than 0.05, which is my alpha level, so I'm rejecting the null, but my actual level of confidence, based on this number, is between, and we can go over here now, 0.0024, so it's right here, that's where I found that in the printout. 1 minus P tells me that I can have 99.76% confidence in my decision to reject the null. And my answer is not sensitive to alpha because P is less than 0 0.001. And it has to be between 0 0.01 and 0 0.10 to be sensitive to alpha. So any reasonable level of alpha that I use, I'm going to be able to reject the null. And I have close to 100% confidence. I'll never have exactly 100% confidence if I'm inferring to the population based on a sample. Okay, now we've got another part to this problem, so it's a fairly lengthy problem, but uh, there's one other part that says, assuming the variances are equal, construct, part B, 95% confidence interval estimate for the difference between the mean amount of crisps eaten, so how much difference is there, is what we want to know, and we want to do it by using a confidence interval. Okay, so here's what we do. We use the formula for a confidence interval, which says x bar 1 minus x bar 2 is plus or minus t alpha divided by 2, which is the critical value of t. And then I've got the square root of s squared p times 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2, all of that under the square root sign. So we look at our printout to find the answers that go into this formula. Okay, so here's my printout. Sample mean, 36 and 25. So the difference between those is 36 minus 25. Plus or minus, here's the value for t, and the value for t also came from the printout. Now notice we're using a little different value for t, and the reason is because this was an upper tail test. And what I need now is a two tail test because it's a confidence interval. So that's why it's 1.9867 instead of the old value, which was 1.662. The reason is I've still got 0.05, but I've got to divide by 2 now. So I'm going to be looking for, and you can see it over here actually, 0.025 would be this number, 1.9867. So that's the number I'm using, which is right here instead of this number, because it is a two-tail test. Still 90 degrees of freedom, but the upper tail area is 0 0.025. Okay, notice another number on here, pooled variance, 327.24, because I'm going to need to use that formula in calculating my, or that number in calculating my confidence interval. So here it is. It is the square root of 327.24 times 1 over 51 plus 1 over 41. So I work out all those numbers, and this is what I come up with for the confidence interval. And it says, 
x bar one or mu one minus mu two, the real difference is between 3.4616 and 18.5384. So I'm 95% confident that the true mean difference is somewhere between three and a half and 18 and a half with 95% confidence. All right. And so here's the numbers. Here's where these numbers come from. Uh, if I use my pH stat, confidence interval estimate for the difference between two means, confidence level is 95%. So notice the T value is 1.9867. And here are the two confidence interval values that we just came up with. Okay, here's how I explain the answer. There's a nine, I have 95% confidence that the difference between the mean amount of Walker crisps for those who watched the celebrity endorsed commercial and those who watched another food snack commercial is between 3.46 and 18.54. That's how I explain my answer. Compare and discuss the results of A and B. All right, so part A, we found out, yes, there is a difference in the mean amount of chips. And actually what I want to say there is the mean amount of chips is greater for the celebrity endorsed crisps commercial than the other group. Okay. Part B tells us the confidence interval with 95% is the actual amount of difference is between 3.46 and 18.53. Both indicate that the mean amount of chips eaten is greater for those who watch the commercial. And since both the upper and lower limits are positive, it says that somewhere between three and 18 more chips is how much students tend to eat or children tend to eat as a result of watching the commercial. These two results are not directly comparable because in part B, I'm using a two-tail test. In part A, I'm using a one-tail test. So that's the only difference in it. It makes it a little bit hard to compare the results, but we do get consistent uh, outcomes in terms of using both methods.